guys so i thought i'd quickly come on to film um a video that i've been wanting to do for a while um i'm hoping that albert's gonna play ball albertina look he looks like a proper little old man at the moment because he's got his little old man jumper and his little receding hair and his little grumpy face and his little cords don't you look like a little old man you're so cute you're so grumpy you're very grumpy so today I wanted to talk to you about dummies um, because um, this was a topic on Channel Mum recently I don't think I ever got around to doing it um, and so I know it's going to be late but I figured I'm going to do it anyway because it's quite relevant to what's happened recently with Sebastian as we have managed to get his dummy off him and taken them away. Sebastian's had a dummy since he was probably about three months old and I originally was very, very against dummies. As a first time parent, I was very, very against them. I thought they were the worst thing ever. I thought they were disgusting and just kind of an easy way of um, pacifying a baby without proper, you know, like a bit of a lazy way of parenting. That is honestly what I thought. I know that's terrible of me and judgmental. And then he arrived and obviously all my, every, all my views changed and um, by sort of week six I was desperate for him to take a dummy it took ages he wouldn't take it at first he would just spit it out um, it took ages for me to actually get round to you know I had to keep trying and trying it, him, it with him and eventually by three months he took it and it was the best thing I did it was so easy for me to settle him if he was crying or if he was upset and of course I wasn't breastfeeding um, at that time as he was when he was older so um, I was able to settle him and it was it was wonderful because I could just give him his muslin and give him his dummy and he'd go down. As a parent who was very depressed and had the postnatal depression, it did make my life a lot easier and it did make my parenting journey easier, which meant I was able to cope better. I think if I I was struggling to settle him when he was very little and it did make my depression worse just because he was always crying and just just wouldn't settle. Albert, I'm kind of trying to do the same thing. I am trying to get encourage him to take a dummy because he will suck our fingers until they're like completely wrinkly and thankfully now albert is starting to take a dummy he doesn't have it all the time he just has it when he's really upset or he's in the car um or he really needs to suckle he so not as often as sebastian had it but he does he i am trying to get him to take one because he, he you know it does help us settle him especially in the car and things so with sebastian he had his dummy and i never really thought about when i was going to take it off him i never really thought that far ahead the thought some people have said they've taken their the dummies off their children at around six months i'd probably try and do that this time around but at the time he just didn't seem ready. I could not imagine how when I couldn't work out how I was going to settle him without it, um, just because he really wanted it all the time. So he right up until eighteen months old. That was the point when I started to think right. I need to think about when I'm going to take this dummy off him, um, because he is obsessed with it. At nursery, they try not to encourage dummies, so he'd go to nursery and he wouldn't have his dummy in the day, and that was great. But when he'd come home, he'd always want it. So roll on two years i'm like right we've got to do it and i figured we'd do it around christmas time when he was just coming up to three i didn't want to have him to have it when he was three now i come from a background of dental hygiene that was what i did at uni and i understand the anatomy of the skull when they get to about three their the jaws start to harden all their bones in their body start to harden so if you if you have a dummy after the age of three it it could it could affect their jaw and their bite. Sebastian does have what's called an open bite and a cross bite. So it means that he can put the two back teeth together when he's smart, when he puts his teeth together, I put all my teeth together. He has like a hole almost where the top teeth and the bottom teeth don't touch at the front. Now that doesn't necess that could just be Sebastian. It might not have come from the dummy, but the dummy probably isn't going to help that. He also does have a crossbite. So um, that doesn't mean that's what it's going to be like when he's older because he still has his baby teeth. But again, it's not going to help things. So I was really keen to for it to go by three. Christmas time seemed like the perfect time. When Sebastian goes to stay, say, for example, stay at my mother-in-law's, he won't have a dummy. He won't ask for it. He'll, I think he goes to bed without it. I can't remember, but I know he didn't really have it much. At nursery, he didn't have it. He doesn't have it to go down to naps. When he was at home, he would not go down unless he had a dummy. He would ask for it all the time. 
Um, he just constantly wanted his diddy, he calls it. His bobos is what he calls his muslin. That was his comforter and his diddy is his, is his dummy. We started to plant the seed probably about a month before Christmas. Started to plant the seed of, right, Father Christmas is going to take your dummy and he's going to give it to, you, to the other children who need it. And in exchange, he's going to leave you a bike. And we kept trying to plant the seed and he started to say, oh, you know, leave my diddies. Yeah, I'm going to get a bike. He started to understand that that was going to happen. So the night before Christmas, Sebastian um, had his dummy. That was the last night. And then I think Chris said to him something like, Father Christmas is going to get you a bike tomorrow, but you have to take all the dummies. But we did it very, like, we barely made a big deal out of it. We didn't do a whole thing of it. We just... We, I think Chris mentioned it once and that was it. Just kind of planted the seed in his head, didn't make a big deal of it. Come Christmas Day, he goes down and sees his bike. He started asking for his dummy, I think, at some point. And we were like, oh, no, Father Christmas took it for your bike. And he was like, yeah. So the seed had been planted, so it was less traumatic. He kind of knew what was coming. Um, and, and what we did was we gradually tried to give it to him less and less and less during that time whenever he was home. He never had it at all when he was at nursery and with other people as I've mentioned but at home we started to give it him less and less same when we were in the car tried to get him to go down on his own without it in the car and things like that we just say we've forgotten it or it was dirty or something in the run up to that and then obviously it made the actual taking it away much easier he had asked for it a couple of times but he hasn't asked for it since he just I think naturally was ready to give it up I think for some children they find it very difficult Albert could struggle but Sebastian didn't really struggle one thing we have noticed though is he's much more hypo so the dummy would calm him down and he'd be able to have quiet time and play with an activity while he had it in his mouth now he doesn't he is a little bit more hypo we also noticed that he started to get up very early in the morning and I've not just noticed this with Sebastian but other parents have told me their children did the same thing so he'd get up really really early like half five times like that um just because I think he'd never known any other way to settle. So he's starting to learn about settling himself with just a comforter. He has a jelly cat rabbit, which he's starting to really like now. Albert has one and he has one, so they both have one each. Um, and he's starting to kind of cuddle that and use that more as a comforter, probably substituting that for the dummy. So that was the only issue. And again, his behaviour has been pretty bad recently. I say bad, just more extreme I don't want to say bad because I think it's very normal for toddlers to be to play up um but that's just I think it's a phase so I don't know if that kind of goes hand in hand with taking away the dummy so that's our story on how we did it in terms of tips I think that would be my biggest tip would be to start planting the seed a good while before you actually plan to do it and to start kind of almost weaning them off it so gradually cut down the amount of time that they have it and we did make things up like oh it was lost we forgot it that kind of thing when he was in the car and even if they were to cry and scream you know just kind of reassure them that you're there and that give them cuddles and things to kind of just so that you know it's going to be upsetting for them for Sebastian it wasn't so much so but I know for other children it has been and just reassure them that it's okay and that you're there etc and maybe find something else to substitute the comforter i am very pro dummy now i never like i said i never used to be but i am now very very pro dummy i just think that they they do help you at times especially if you've got other children it, it really helps kind of stop albert crying it helps me think because he's not and you know i know i'm reassured that he's not crying and able to focus on sebastian a lot of babies do use your breasts as dummies and that's natural they do that because it's kind of a way of keeping your milk supply up it's it's a healthy it's healthy for them to use you as a dummy basically it's comfort it's safe but sometimes in modern day life where we haven't got a lot of people around to help us or we've got multiple children it just isn't really practical it can make things a little bit difficult for you so it does just take the edge off i think and does make things a bit easier um i know some people look at them and think they're horrible vile things and i think that there is but i do think that there is a time and a place to use them and certainly for naps and for um for the car journeys it was perfect for us if you've got any tips leave them down below what you did or your stories did your child wake up really early for example when it, when you started taking them away um let us know if you like this video please subscribe and i will see you guys soon bye